Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review. I was just at Adepticon today and I was going through the dealer's room and someone was selling the copy of Mount Everest for $5. Uh, don't really know anything about the game, but I figured five bucks I'll try it. I only know of one other game of, of about mountain climbing, so and I didn't try that one, so this will be the first mountain climbing game I try. So let's see what this is about. It looks like it's from Poland. But don't worry, it's uh, also got an uh, English translation on it, so... But anyhow, it says it's for two to five players, takes 90 minutes, and you have to be a 10 or older to play. Let's read what the blurb says on the back. Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. So far, it has attracted nearly 4,000 mountaineers from around the world, and each year more and more visit it. The vast majority of them are tourists who do not have the experience and skills required to conquer an 8,000er. Without appropriate help, not only would they be unable to manage it, they wouldn't even come to the Himalayas. Fortunately, you are here, an experienced climber and guide. You've climbed Broad Peak, K2, and other 8,000ers, and you've already been on Mount Everest several times. This time you're facing a much more difficult task. You must guide clients to the summit and bring them back down safely. Looking up at the mountain, you know that's what's easy for you. You might be a d deadly, ad but for you might, you know that what's easy for you might be a deadly adventure for your clients. You need to plan where to set up camps, how to handle acclimatization, who to lead up the mountain and when, and when to guide them back down. Looking at the enthusiastic faces of your clients, you understand that their life is in your hands. So, sounds interesting, so you're a mountain guide. Let's take a look in here. Cover artwork looks nice. Two rule books, interesting. Are they both the same? Oh, one's in Polish and one's in English. That's cool. Alright, so let's take a look at this rule book here. Rule book is 15 pages long, and it looks like there's not that much writing on each page, and there's lots of color illustrations. So it starts out going over the components. Oh, you got a uh, camp guide uh, meeples, that's cool. And then it's talking about game preparation. So I guess that, that would mean game setup. And now it's talking about guides, clients. Climbers give two victory points if they reach the top and later give two victory points if they return to the base. So that's good. They have to live in order for you to get the full amount of victory points. And the sequence of play is... Card selection, risk tokens, action phase, acclimatization check, and end of turn. So that's cool. You check to see if anyone's getting uh, altitude sickness. A player may unload a guide only in certain situations. Unloading is normally free. There's no movement or acclimatization cost. Only exception is placing a camp as described below. And it's talking about oxygen and clients. So that's cool. Moving guides. Moving in the icefall region, adding acclimatization, placing a camp using oxygen. Oh, this is really cool. Depending on your altitude, uh, d determines how many cards you get, it looks like. Number of cards drawn from the acclimatization deck depends on the altitude of the camp where the oxygen is spent. So above 8,000 meters, three cards, seven to 8,000, two cards, and 6,000 to 7,000, one card, and below 6,000, zero cards. So I guess below 6,000 meters, uh, oxygen uh, isn't as much of a problem. And marking victory points, you have something called risk tokens. Ah, and there's weather influence. Yeah, I would imagine weather is a, a big deal when you're on the highest mountain on the world. Acclimatization check, and end of turn phase, and then game end. The game ends at the end of the last, which is the 18th day, when the weather tiles have run out. The winner is the player with the most victory points in case of a tie. The tie is won by the player who is first to gain that many points, i.e. their pawn is leftmost in that victory point space. So that's cool.
Let's see what other components they have here. Oh, there's a little more in here. Oh, they have uh, an expansion for it. And now it's talk, uh, talking about the different spa uh, uh, features on the game board and the climbing route. Okay, and the back of the book has a turn summary. That's a good idea. And it also tells you what you get victory points for, or, or victory points for reaching the top. Climber gets two, tourist gets three for reaching base after reaching the top. Climber gets two, tourist gets three. Victory points for death. Climber negative three, tourist minus four. Maximum acc acclimatization after phase four. A climber is four, and a tourist is three. So that's nice. It's all on the book here so you have it right at your fingertips and here's the different uh, counters and tokens and tiles nice let's take a look at this map it's mounted that's good yeah it looks really good Yeah, I'm surprised they're selling this for five bucks. I, I mean, I'm glad I was able to get it that cheap, but I'm usually you don't mark something down to five bucks unless you've been trying to sell it for a while. So I'm surprised they weren't able to sell this. This looks really cool. It's got some handy dandy plastic bags to store your components here. And here's the meeples. Look interesting. What do we have here? Rebel? I guess that's the name of this. Uh, they have a catalog. So they have a bunch of games, actually. Oh, they have Small World. I didn't know that was theirs. Played that a long time ago. Cool. The Cave. That sounds interesting. Slavica 2. Darkness Come. Hmm. Alright, and it looks like we have some player boards here. Looks like you would store uh, equipment there. Interesting. Got the cards there, and then we get some tiles. It looks like they punched themselves out already. Interesting. Let's take a look at the cards. Yeah, not sure what the different numbers mean, but I'll know once I read the rule book. But the artwork's all right. It's got a good theme, very thematic artwork. Let's see what the other deck looks like. Cool. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be that hard to learn, so I'll try this out soon. Alright, thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, please click like on it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, have a good evening.